I get sent to a diesel dump? USS Tyru, SS416, launched at 48. Pearl Harbor, out of Pearl Harbor. It was launched, it was launched in Vallejo, actually. Built in Vallejo. Goes to Pearl, I get my, sent my first boat. So here I am, I report on board. Now, the funny thing about subsailers, they're a little raunchy lot, particularly diesel boats. There's a different kind of sailor in a diesel boat. They're a little bit like Hell's Angels. <laughs> you know, the guys who wear the dolphins, the little dolphins, wear that, they earn that. As soon as you're in a submarine, you don't get it, you gotta earn it. First boat you're on, you gotta learn every pipe, every wire, every switch, and every compartment, no matter what you are. If you're a cook, you gotta know how to fire the torpedo tubes. If you're an engine man, you gotta know how to make scrambled eggs. <laughs> Everybody knows everything else, and you got to get checked out. You have to get qualified. And then once you get qualified, then you get to uh, <clears throat> wear the dolphins. Back at a New London submarine school, we were there, and it's like uh, the last thing, last couple of weeks is you go out on a little boat, a training boat, and they close the hatch and go under, and they watch everybody, and if you panic, then they surface and you're off. People have claustrophobia. Some of them do. Some of them pass all the tests, but they can't go underwater. And that hatch closes. Kadook. And it goes underwater, and the little bubbles come up. <laughs> Somebody go raises their hand, they go to the boat, they open the hatch, they let them off. And uh, they're all, little boys are filing off, they're all there. 18, 19, 20 year olds, fresh out of here. We're gonna go for our first submarine ride. And sitting in the hatch is this old salty dog, who's got tattoos all over his place, and he's really good, you know, fuck, I gotta do this thing again. And he's, wait right here, guys. Some guy climbing up the ladder, and the guy sitting there goes, hey, What's for chow today? And they grab each other and they kiss each other full on the lips. They go, tuna fish, again? <laughs> of course, this little line of schoolboys is standing here going. <laughs> and here it is, we're out on a cruise. We're out for like nine months on this Westpac cruise. And uh, everybody's rocked back and forth with me a little bit. It's a small boat, 82 guys, 300 feet. About big, as many people as this. Probably less room. Add three engines, a prairie masker, a control room, ten torpedo tubes, okay? A galley, all right? Stores for 60 days, okay? Cram it all down into a tube like this in a sewer pipe. Okay? And small boats have a lively action at sea with this thing. So a lot of times when there's a heavy sea, you're traveling on the surface, like the old diesel boats would travel anywhere that you're on the surface. You're rocking and you're rolling. And you're standing in the engine room, and there's an engine here about as big, about that big. Diesel engine, I'm talking a big engine. Big as a mini bus, minivan. And it's 20 pistons. Pistons about this big, and there are two of them inside of each cylinder. Going boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Internal combustion. Intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Intake, <laughs> compression, power, and, and exhaust. exhaust. Intake, <laughs> compression, Power and exhaust. Intake, compression, power and exhaust. And it sounds like this. Eight to twelve hours a day. Oh, no, I'll say this. This is the longest run water was 55 days. Ooh. How many people have seen the long version of Das Boot? <laughs> <laughs> and we're, they don't do laundry. There was no laundry done. There was no showers taken. No. No. Enlisted guys, because, because these small, small diesel boats can't make enough water to do these kind of nice things, what you did was the enlisted guys didn't take showers, didn't shave. You, know, you brush your teeth, that's all. Brush your teeth, wash your hands. That's all you're allowed to do. The officers could shower once a week. Assholes. <laughs> Uh, so, it, but we take sponge baths. The torpedo guys had alcohol stuff, which we take sponge baths with alcohol. <laughs> That's about as good as that got. So it got kind of rank. And there's a thing called a sanitary tank. So you're crapping and pooping in these tanks, and then you, every once in a while you'd blow the tank overboard. And that's you know, just like flushing your toilet. But sometimes when we're sneaking off China, we have its full tank and we can't dump it because you know because it's full and we're just kind of like if we dump it then they'll see a slick on top of the water of our shit <laughs> and there's a pressure in this tank when you go down underwater so we, if we're diving deep we got to let that pressure off you can't let it off up here because it'll so you have to vent sanitary inboard <laughs> Imagine, uh, imagine 
Burning Man. Okay. Oh God! You're living in one of the porta potties. Absolutely. Don't do that. So again. you're. Oh, so you're smelling walking God. around going, oh, let me smell this instead. Oh God. Oh God, make it go away. Kiss me with tuna. So I'm sleeping, and all of a sudden, an alarm goes off. And it's the old collision alarm, and it goes like this. Three Stooges kind of thing. Now, out of a sound sleep, I turn, put my feet on the deck, and there's four things you gotta do to secure the forward torpedo room for collision. And you gotta hit that hatch, you gotta close that hatch, you gotta hit the speed going along over there, and you gotta twist that valve there. And out of a sound sleep, I find myself lurching one step this way, somebody had got that one. I lurched one step this way, somebody had got that one. I turned around to get this one, and the other guy had got that. The other guy had just thrown that switch, and I sat back down on my bunk. <laughs> Looking back on it, it was very automatic. Out of a sound sleep, I had been drilled into discipline so fast. Yeah, but there was just a small boat. Luckily, everybody's right there. But it was that, 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 that. And then all of a sudden, we went... We ran aground. We ran aground, 1967, November. One time, the South China Sea. Winter. Just came from Chinhei, Korea, and we're headed for some secret ops off Shanghai, China. We're going to do some spying. We raise a couple of masts, electronic things, we eavesdrop on their radar signals, we take photographs and infrared, and in the daytime we sneak out and we snorkel a little bit to charge batteries, and they come out looking for us. The Chinese know we're out here. So they come out, they're going, ping, ping, they're looking for us. They're looking for that da, ping, da, there he is. And the China, we're, so we're playing games with the Chinese. And when they get close enough, they think they know where they throw a hand grenade over the side that would just go bang, make a lot of noise. They don't want an international incident because we're outside a 12 mile limit, but they say it's a 200 mile limit, but so what? So they, so they just play games with us. So they'll throw a hand grenade over and you're going to hear a kum, kum, outside. Saying, we know you're down, you son of a bitch. Down guys. Hey. Yeah. yeah. And we're cruising on the surface. Standing in Israel. Through the back hatch is a mirror image of this engine room. Well, it's got two engines, and we only got one engine, but there's two guys on watch standing there like this, bored shitless. Look at the dials once in a while, you tap the dial. Okay. Take some readings. So we look in the aft engine room, and the aft engine room guys are running around, and they're doing something, and they're shutting down number three. Spinning down. And then meanwhile, this noise is going, and the whole place is, bait. It's bait. And it's scary. And these guys are swinging. And we're standing and watching them. And one guy's got his head below the deck plates, and he's trying to turn off the main fuel valve, and the other guy's hitting the breaker in the bucket. He goes and gestures, and he slow-mo. Everything shifts into that accidental slow-mo. <laughs> yeah. And they, their engine man, head engine man, dives through our hatch into our forward engine room. And you can see the oiler dive into the back hatch into the motor room. And he slams the hatch, spins the thing shut, and backs away from it. <laughs> go, go, bunk, go, 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 there's this thing called a governor that runs this engine. The governor kind of like allows the fuel to go in. You set it and it's, it, keeps it, it keeps it from you know, sucking up. Because this thing is a wild machine. This is big monster sucking things. Intake compression. <laughs> well, a little pin inside this governor sheared off. It was running so fast, even though the fuel was gone, it was sucking up its own lubricating oil through the rings. So it was running on its own blood now. <laughs> Baruga, ooga, dive, dive, and then you start slamming things, spinning things around like this. <laughs> <laughs>